Are there other places in the solar system where you don't need a spacesuit to visit? At first, this question might seem like an easy one. No. But surprisingly, it's not that simple, and the short answer is actually yes. Not to be deceptive, I do need to clarify a point. By spacesuit, I mean a fully enclosed pressure suit that maintains an internal environment. There are no other places in the solar system where you would not need an oxygen supply, but there are a few where a fully enclosed pressure suit is optional. Venus The most Earth-like environment is, funny enough, found on the least Earth-like planet, the most hostile terrestrial planet. A spacesuit wouldn't protect you on the surface of Venus. Its crushing carbon dioxide atmosphere with pressures 90 times that of Earth and a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius, 842 degrees Fahrenheit, would quickly kill you. But it's not the surface we need to look at. High in its clouds, around 50 kilometers, or 31 miles, above the surface, the pressures are around 1 bar, 1 Earth atmosphere at sea level, with temperatures ranging from 0 to 50 degrees Celsius, 32 to 122 Fahrenheit. The air is still toxic and contains sulfuric acid rain on occasion, but a human would not need a spacesuit to enjoy the view off a balcony of a cloud city. All you would need is an oxygen mask and something with acid resistance to cover exposed skin, maybe a sweater or cooling vest if it's on one of the temperature extremes. An interesting thing about Venus is the atmosphere is so dense that our air is actually buoyant there. A cloud city could float at 50 kilometers using a balloon full of normal, breathable air. We could also use some locally produced hydrogen to help control the altitude of the city. Due to Venus having a gravity very similar to Earth, people growing up in a Venus cloud city would not need to worry about low gravity issues that arise with the Moon and Mars. I recommend doing this. Venus is a wonderful planet and could seriously do with some cloud cities. The Gas Giants Jupiter is not a very hospitable place. Its radiation belt is the strongest in the solar system, its gravity the highest, and its spin the fastest. It would probably be better to not live there. Much like Venus, Jupiter holds a secret in its clouds. Gas giants do not have a solid defined surface. To get around this, a boundary layer is usually chosen where the pressure is around one bar, and this is used to represent a quote-unquote surface. This layer is present on all the gas giants. If you were floating around in a balloon in this layer of the troposphere and decided to step out for a minute, you wouldn't need a pressure suit, just an oxygen supply and thermal protection. Be warned, however. On Jupiter, you would first notice the hydrogen-helium air and ammonia clouds around you are cold. Very, very cold. Minus 133 degrees Celsius, minus 208 Fahrenheit cold. You would need full skin coverage with thermal garments and probably active heating as well. The story is the same with the other gas giants, with the temperatures getting progressively colder the further out in the solar system you go. Another factor here would be the wind. Gas giants are very windy places. On Neptune, for example, the wind would shred your balloon, and probably you in the process, with gusts over 2,500 kilometers an hour, or 1,553 miles per hour. You might not need a spacesuit, but something to protect you from the wind would be helpful. Moving your balloon along with the wind could also be helpful. If you can manage the winds, you could easily hang out with just an oxygen mask and thermal garment at the one bar region of these planets. Unlike Venus, I do not recommend doing this, however. Titan. Staying with Saturn, we find an often overlooked location, the hazy moon of Titan. Titan has a thick nitrogen atmosphere containing lots of interesting chemistry and lakes of liquid hydrocarbons on its surface. Unlike the other worlds mentioned so far, this is the only one where we're going to be on the surface. The surface pressure of Titan is at 1.5 bar, which is 50% higher than sea level on Earth. This is well within the tolerance for humans. As a result, you could go for a walk on Titan without a pressure suit and be just fine. The air is not breathable, being 95% nitrogen with the rest being methane and other trace gases, so supplemental oxygen would obviously be needed. The air is also cold, at minus 179 degrees Celsius, or minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit. So you would also need a warm thermal covering. But this is where things actually deviate from others on this list. The air is very cold, but there is also very little wind on the surface of Titan. Wind makes cold worse as it removes heat faster. Anyone who lives where it gets cold in the winter knows what I'm talking about. Because of this, if you don't need to move around too much, you could spend a few minutes with just a full-face oxygen mask and something akin to conventional Arctic winter gear. You would start to feel cold fairly fast as the thick air would still remove heat, but slow enough to enjoy some of the scenery before going back inside. 
Add in active heating from a garment under your warm arctic gear and no exposed skin, and you should be fine outside for quite a while. Like Venus, I highly recommend doing this, just don't touch the hydrocarbon seas. You would need some kind of cryo dive suit to do that. That's actually a neat idea. Hmm. Well, I have a new idea for a short story to work on now. I'm gonna go start working on that, so thanks for watching.